All right, welcome to the practice exam review uh, for exam number one in trigonometry. Uh, so a couple of quick notes on the exam itself. Uh, you do not need to attend recitation while taking the exam. Uh, the exams are on D2L, just like the quizzes are. Uh, you'll get 60 minutes to take the exam once you start it, and it's open for the two-day period of Thursday, Friday, just like the quizzes are. Uh, so again, do not need to take it during recitation. You can if you want to, so I have it set up so that you have a class time to take the exam if you want it that way. Uh, but again, it works just the same as all the quizzes. So just log on to D2L and take it when you're ready on either Thursday or Friday. Uh, but with all that out of the way, let's get started on the practice exam. So step question one on the practice exam is a blank unit circle where you are then asked to fill in uh, everything that's on the unit circle. Uh, you can find a completed unit circle on the class notes. So I'm gonna not highlight it here, but you should know that on the exam itself, the first 18 questions are just going to be random questions about the unit circle. I'll ask you for sine, cosine, or tangent of some value. And then you will need to provide the correct unit circle, the correct unit circle value. Oh, so, and again, that's the first, there are 18 questions that are just on the unit circle, one point each, uh, but I would expect that that takes under five minutes to answer all 18. They should all go pretty quick. Uh, as a reminder, there is the unit circle practice quiz that you can attempt as many times as you like. That's on D2L right now. Uh, and I recommend continuing to attempt the, the practice, that unit circle practice quiz until you can get a perfect score in under two minutes. And I would say when you, when you know the unit circle that well, then you probably know it well enough to move on. Uh, technically, I'm not requiring any memorization in this class. Uh, but you would do well to memorize the unit circle. It is going to help you out a lot over the rest of the semester if you can quickly recall unit circle values. Uh, but let's move on to the main event, being that you know the actual questions on the practice exam. Uh, and we had to make a quick edit to the very first question. Uh, so it was a little bit overdetermined. So I've changed things around to say that uh, tangent of theta is negative and sine of theta is one ninth. And we're gonna to wanna to use only trig identities to find the exact value of cosine theta. So if I know that tangent is negative and sine is positive, so tangent is a negative, cosine is a positive, that must mean that we are in quadrant two. Uh, and if we're in quadrant two, cosine is going to be negative. So I'm just gonna put a negative in the box right now uh, so I don't forget it at the end. Uh, but then again, we'll use some trig identities only to find the value of cosine theta. Uh, and probably the one that we're going to want to use is sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one, uh, which means that cosine squared is equal to one minus sine squared, which is equal to one minus, uh, that'll be one ninth squared. throw a splash of color in there. Uh, so one ninth squared is gonna be one over 89, or one over 89, that's one over 81. Also notice I'm gonna change one to be 81 over 81, minus one over one over 81. We'll use the same color there. Uh, so we get 80 over 81. As our, as our result over here. Uh, now that was cosine squared. We're gonna want the square root of that. So cosine of theta is gonna end up being plus or minus the square root of 80 over 81. <clears throat> uh, and again, because we're in quadrant one, we're gonna end up taking the negative value here. Uh, so we want the negative out of our choice of plus or minus. Uh, and that's the square root of 80 over 9. 
Uh, but we can change that around a little bit. This is the square root of 16 times five divided by nine. So this is negative four root five over nine. So I think if you went to web work, uh, depending on the web work problem, sometimes it'll take square root of 80 over nine. Uh, but since this is a multiple choice exam, uh, the only answer I'd provide in the multiple choice section would be four root five over nine or negative four root five over nine. I will not give you like multiple correct answers. So I wouldn't put square root of 80 over nine and four square root five over nine. I would only give the reduced value. So I'm not gonna try to, none of the questions are meant to be trick questions, uh, but we do ask that you, uh, you know, do some rationalization. So yeah, uh, so we'll simplify our square roots and get four root five. And again, the thing was negative uh, because we know that theta is in the second quadrant. All right, then 14, use the unit circle, co-terminal angles and or trig identities to determine the exact value of each of the following trig functions. Show all work, uh, including some trig identities used in general for putting the numerical value, simplify complex fractions. Okay, so, uh, for that first one, cotangent of negative four pi over three, we can use the fact that cotangent is odd to pull a negative out. So negative cotangent of four pi over three. Uh, and this is going to be the same as negative one over tangent four pi over three. Uh, which, if we go to the unit circle, here we're gonna have to kind of move down where I've got enough space. Uh, what comes next? Or well, yeah, let's actually just put it right here. This is negative one over tangent of four pi over three, we know is positive square root of three off the unit circle. Uh, so the last step is to rationalize that thing. So we should get negative root three over three. Uh, next up, we've got sine of 17 pi over six. Uh, and that is larger than the unit circle uh, since the unit circle's max value would be two pi, which is the same as 12 pi over six. So we're gonna wanna subtract two pi in order to find a coterminal angle. Again, two pi is 12 pi over six. So 17 minus 12 is five pi over six, uh, which means that the sine of 17 pi over six is equal to the sine of five pi over six, because again, those are coterminal angles. Highlight that in purple, just to say that it came from over there. Uh, and off the unit circle, we know that the sine of five pi over six is one half. So one half goes in the box, positive one half even. Uh, five pi over six is in the second quadrant. We know sine is positive there. <laughs> uh, on to the next one, We're looking for the cosecant of seven pi over four, which is one over sine of seven pi over four, uh, which will be one over negative root two over two, Uh, which is going to simplify to negative root two. <laughs> All right, let's go back and check the chat real quick. Okay, so we're gonna come back and look at simplifying the square root of 80 over 81. Uh, so uh, that square root applies to both the numerator and the denominator. Uh, now the denominator is a square number, it's just 81. Uh, so square root of 81 is nine. That part I think goes relatively smooth, but it's the square root of 80 uh, where we want to simplify that a bit. So I wanna express 80 as uh, factor of 
some square number times some other numbers that are not square. Uh, and I happen to look at 80 and notice that it's 16 times five, or maybe you start with eight times 10, uh, and then you can split eight times 10 up into eight times two times five, bring the two into the eight and you, you get 16 times five, right? But we're just looking for square numbers. And I found 16 times five, which means that I can take that square root of 16 and bring it to the outside of the square root. The square root of 16 times five is four times square root of five. So then because I'm multiplying things together, I can take the square root of 16 uh, and then just leave square root of five on the inside. Uh, and then finally, the purpose of giving you the tangent is less than zero uh, tells us which quadrant our angle theta is in, right? So if I just had sine theta equals one ninth, I would be stuck with cosine theta equals plus or minus four root five over nine. Uh, so the fact giving you the tangent theta is less than zero, tangent is a negative value, that tells us we must be in the second quadrant uh, where cosine is negative. So telling you about the tangent part uh, just gives you uh, the, the negative value in the end. If I didn't give you tangent, you'd have a plus or minus in your final answer. <laughs> All right, then we were looking at, uh, where did it go? Part two, one more time. Uh, so uh, when we look at the sine of 17 pi over six, uh, we probably recognize 17 pi over six is not something that commonly comes up on the unit circle because uh, it's too large, All right? The, the highest we go up on the unit circle is 11 pi over six. 17 pi is gonna be more than that because uh, we just look at values between zero and two pi. Uh, so to solve that one, we're going to want a coterminal angle, uh, meaning some angle that gives the same value for sine and cosine because it's in the same position but it's an angle that we hopefully recognize off of the unit circle. Uh, so uh, to find that coterminal angle, I'm going to subtract two pi, because that's one full circle. That's why I've got the 17 pi over six minus two pi, uh, which is the same thing as, let me just maybe move this off to the side. This is 17 pi over six minus 12 pi over six. All right, two pi is the same as 12 pi over six, gives me a fraction that's over six. I can then take that difference so that 17 minus 12 is five. So 17 pi over six minus 12 pi over six is five pi over six. So because five pi over six is coterminal to 17 pi over six, I can say that the sine of 17 pi over six is equal to the sine of five pi over six. Go to the unit circle to get a value of one half. All right, and what have we got next? Uh, problem four, uh, we're gonna look to get the secant of a value that is not on the unit circle. Uh, so step one, uh, we're gonna end up looking for the secant of 90 degrees minus alpha, where alpha is this angle up here. Uh, which means that this red angle down here uh, this is going to be 90 degrees minus alpha. So 90 minus alpha, the complement of alpha is the red angle, uh, and alpha itself is the blue angle. Uh, so if we go back to the trig identities that we have, this is a co-function identity, uh, and we, are, we know that the secant of 90 minus alpha is cosecant of alpha.
So step one is recognizing that that's going to be uh, a trig identity. And then we just need to evaluate cosecant of alpha, which should be hypotenuse over opposite, uh, which means we need to get our missing, let's call it a y value down here. Uh, so throw that into an equation. I'll have the square root of 57 squared plus y squared is equal to 11 squared, uh, meaning that y squared is going to be 11 squared minus 57. Uh, so that's 121 minus 57. Uh, which simplifies to 64. So if y squared is 64, uh, y is going to be 8. Uh, since this is just a triangle, not somewhere in the coordinate plane, we don't need to worry about the plus or minus. We'll just take positive 8. Uh, and then finally, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So I want 11 over 8. Uh, so again, I got two. Uh, I got two 8 because y squared is 64. And the square root of y squared is y. Square root of 64 is 8. All right, then we get a multiple choice section, uh, which, I mean, the whole actual exam on D2L is multiple choice. So all of the exam will look kind of like this, or be formatted like this. Uh, these are just maybe a few quick rapid fire questions. All right, in that first question, we've got that cotangent is negative, but secant is positive, and we want to determine uh, the terminal side of angle theta. Uh, so cotangent is negative, secant is positive. Uh, secant shares a sign with cosine, which means that it's going to be positive in quadrants one and four. Uh, cotangent shares a sign with tangent, so it's going to be negative in quadrants two and four. Uh, and because those two pieces of information overlap at quadrant four, that's the answer we're going to want to pick. Quadrant four. Uh, if we put that into a coordinate plane, uh, we're looking at quadrants one and four based on cosine. And we were looking at quadrants two and four based on that cotangent information. So they overlapped in the fourth quadrant, so that's the one that we'll take. All right, next up, uh, we have an angle in standard position that measures negative eight radians. Notice that's not negative eight pi radians. Uh, it just means it's, it's negative eight. Uh, and we want to know what quadrant that thing's going to end up in. So if we break things down uh, based on the decimal approximations for the, uh, for the coordinate axes, that would be an angle of 0. Pi is about 3.14. Pi over 2, I think, is about 1.57. Uh, and... 3 pi over 2, about 4.71. But 6.28 for 2 pi over here. Uh, so we want to figure out where in that range negative 8 is going to fit. Uh, so first, negative 8, we should probably find a coterminal angle that's on the unit circle. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Negative uh, 8 plus. Well, notice if we add 6.28, we're still going to have a negative number. Uh, so I'm going to add two full circles. So I'm going around the circle twice uh, to come back to a coterminal angle. 
doing all that, I got 4.56. Uh, and if we just highlight where that will fall, let's maybe pick ourselves a new color here. How about purple? That's what we were already using for coterminal. So negative eight is coterminal to 4.56. And that's going to have to fall about right here, right? It should be more than 3.14, but it's less than 4.71, uh, meaning that uh, that angle should be in quadrant three. Right, moving on, uh, two coterminal angles to negative seven pi over 15. Uh, so we'll kind of keep that coterminal angle idea going. Let's take negative seven pi over 15, and I'm going to add, subtract two pi. We'll go one that's backwards. And we'll also take negative seven pi over 15 and we'll add two pi. slide over a little bit so I've got some more room to work with. Uh, so 2 pi as a fraction over 15, that should be the same thing as 30 pi over 15. Uh, and that simplifies to negative 37 pi over 15. Uh, do that same thing again, uh, but this time we're adding 2 pi. So we're adding 30 pi over 15. Negative 7 plus 30 is positive 23 pi over 15. So hopefully we can find an answer that gives those two. Uh, and it looks like we can. Option E. Then next up, we're looking for a reference angle to 37 pi over, over 30. Uh, so 37 over 30, that's going to be more than 1, but less than 1 and a half, which means 37 pi over 30. It's going to be more than pi, but less than 3 pi over 2. So it's in quadrant 3. That's uh, so the way I got there. We take our 37 over 30. It's more than one, but it's less than 1.5. Uh, so again, that means that 37 pi over 30 is more than one pi, but less than one and a half pi or three pi over two. Uh, so putting that thing into quadrant three, uh, we should get that our reference angle Uh, is equal to theta minus pi, uh, which is going to be 37 pi over 30 minus 30 pi over 30, uh, which will be 7 pi over 30 for our reference angle. So option A is the one we'd be after. All right, next we have an arc length problem. Uh, so I know on some of the web work questions, uh, we had some things going on, like you had that DMS notation, degrees, minutes, seconds. Uh, we aren't going to do any of that on, uh, on the actual exam. Uh, so there will be some questions about arc length. Probably there's going to be one about, like, you know, it seems like we keep using radius of the Earth. That's a fun problem, but we're not going to do anything with that degrees, minutes, seconds notation. Uh, but what we are told, radius of the Earth is approximately 3,960 miles. And find the distance between Dallas, Texas, and Omaha, Nebraska, given that we know we have a couple of angles there, or a couple of latitudes there.
So Omaha would be that top line. Dallas will be that bottom line. I'm going to exaggerate the angles to sort of emphasize what's going on. Uh, and I want to get that angle theta right there. Uh, so if I go back to the given information, that's just the difference between the two latitudes. So 41.26 minus 32.79. And we should hopefully get an answer there. 8.47 degrees is what I got. So if we come back to our arc length formula, S is equal to R theta. Oh. So if we just plug some stuff in, the radius of the Earth, 3,960. Our angle is 8.47 degrees, uh, but it is rather important when we use this equation that our angle theta be in radians, because if it's not, uh, the equation isn't gonna work out right. Let's fly that over just a little bit. So I've got to convert my angle that's currently in degrees to radians, which means multiplying by pi over 180. Uh, and from here, it's just a calculator question. Uh, so plug all that into a calculator and see what you get. Uh, I got 585.4.40. And that should be in miles since our radius was in miles. <laughs> oh, let's see, what's up next? All right, we've got a medical alert helicopter flying at 734 feet. Emergency crew sees an ambulance, ambulance at an angle of depression of 62 degrees. And we want the distance uh, of the ambulance from a point on the ground directly below the helicopter. So we draw a helicopter real quick. Which might look something like that. Uh, let's do length to shapes real quick. Hmm, it turned out all right. And so we'll say that our helicopter is up here at the top of that side of the triangle. And I'm going to draw in a horizontal line at the helicopter's position. Uh, what else do we know? It's flying at an altitude of 734 feet. Uh, so this distance, oops, ink to shape should come back off. I know that this distance right here is 734. Uh, we want the distance uh, from the ambulance to a point directly below the helicopter, which means that distance X, so along the ground. And we should correctly label our angle of depression, which is going to be this angle up here. That angle is 62 degrees. Uh, so I know that there is one question on the exam uh, where you're asked to correctly identify an angle of depression. I'm going to give you like four different pictures, uh, and you just have to choose the correct one. Uh, the practice exam is not graded, no. Uh, so make sure that you label, uh, if it's an angle of depression, that means that we're measuring down from a horizontal line. Uh, but we also know that the angle of depression and the angle of elevation have the same measure. They're just located different places. Uh, so let's just highlight angle of depression. It's the one in red. Uh, the one in green is the angle of elevation. And you can, we can use that to just help us solve the problem. Because right, then at the end of the day, we slide that out of the way. I have an angle. I know my opposite side. I'm looking for my adjacent side. 
which means that I've got the tangent of 62 degrees uh, is equal to 734 over x. So if I turn and solve that thing for x, 734 over tangent of 62 degrees. Uh, I got 390.27. Uh, that should be in feet. Uh, in feet, because our height was measured in feet. Yeah, cool. So next up, we've got problem 12. Uh, so we've got a point, negative 1 over 5, 4 over 5. And we want to find out if it is on uh, the terminals. It, we'll figure out you know, uh, if that thing is on the unit circle. Uh, so just by looking at it real quick, uh, my points one fifth and four fifth. If I add one fifth and four fifth together, I get one, which means it's probably not on the unit circle. It's not technically the way we check, but if the numbers themselves add to one, it probably isn't uh, because the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. So then x plus y, we have to square them first. Uh, and just to answer a quick question that's in the chat, uh, yes, uh, this, you, this OneNote document is always available on D2L. It has all the class notes. It'll have all of the live class sessions that I do every Monday and Wednesday. And it also has uh, this practice exam on there. So if you just click the link that goes to the completed class notes on D2L, uh, you should be able to find this page. Uh, and if we look over to the navigation on the left, there's even a whole new tab that's just for practice exams. So you can find it pretty easy. Uh, but right. So our question was, uh, where did we go? Uh, right, trying to decide if this thing is on the unit circle or not, uh, which means I want to take the two, point, the two pieces, x and y, square them and add them together. Doing so gives me one over 25 plus 16 over 25, which is 17 over 25. Uh, and last I checked, uh, 17 over 25 is not equal to one. Uh, so because it's not equal to one, I know that the correct answer here is no. Right? If I had done that math all out and I got one as my result, then it would be on the unit circle. Uh, but uh, since it's not on the unit circle, um, well, I would, or because it's not equal to one, it's not on the unit circle. There we go. That's the correct order to say the words in. All right, and then we want to use that point to find the exact value of secant theta, uh, which means uh, we're going to need to create a reference triangle. Uh, again, because this thing isn't on uh, the unit circle, uh, we'll need to construct a triangle. We have a negative x value and a positive y value, so we must be in the second quadrant. Oop, come back. So we'll start there. Uh, X is negative one fifth. So negative one fifth should go here. Uh, y is positive four fifths, so it should go there. Uh, we'll need to find our hypotenuse. So the missing side, C, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to get it. Uh, and we know from above uh, that C squared is 17 over 25. 
because we already did all the work in part A. So if C squared is 17 over 25, means C itself is square root of 17 over five. And because it's the hypotenuse, uh, we do not want to use a negative value. Uh, so the hypotenuse is always positive, so we don't need to worry about that plus or minus. Uh, in the end, we're looking for secant of theta. Uh, so secant should be adjacent or hypotenuse over adjacent, uh, which should be root 17 over five divided by negative one fifth. Uh, and that'll simplify to negative root 17. Those fives will reduce with one another. Uh, and there's that negative one in the denominator. So it ought to be, the answer should be negative. All right, I wanna say this is our last page. Nope, two more pages. because right, we get some trig identities next. Uh, so, Given that secant theta is negative 37 over 35 uh, and sine is less than zero, uh, draw a reference triangle and then solve some other things. So secant is negative and sine is negative, which must mean we're in quadrant three. Secant, again, having the same sign as cosine. Sine and cosine are both negative. We're in the third quadrant. Uh, so we will draw ourselves a triangle here. Put our coordinate axes right there. Oops. So if we're actually looking at our angle theta, it's going to be that blue angle. Uh, but our reference angle would be the one in red. Uh, just to highlight where those reference angles are located. They're always inside the reference triangle that we want to construct. Uh, and secant, which is hypotenuse over adjacent, is 37 over 35. So 37 goes here, 35 up here on the adjacent side. And because secant is negative, I have to put a negative sign on either the 35 or the 37. Uh, but it's fairly important that that go on the 35. Because right, so the adjacent side should be negative and a hypotenuse is always positive. Uh, that leaves us with a missing side, which I'll call Y. I'll use the Pythagorean theorem to get that missing side. Negative 35 squared plus Y squared is 37 squared, uh, meaning that y squared uh, is 37 squared minus 35 squared. You should hopefully get 144 if you plug all that into a calculator. I don't at all expect that you, you know, do that uh, by hand. Uh, that's definitely a calculator problem. Uh, but once we get there, we can take the square root of both sides. Uh, so y should be plus or minus 12. And because we're in the third quadrant, we know that y should also come out to be a negative number. Right, third quadrant, both x and y are negative. Uh, so y should be negative 12. Uh, and that's our reference triangle. Negative 12 for y, negative 35 for x, and 37 for the hypotenuse. Uh, and then from there, we just want to answer a few more questions. So first, we've got cosine of negative theta. Uh, and cosine is an even function. Uh, so because it's an even function, cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of positive theta. A negative input does not affect 
an even function in any way. So step one is getting rid of that negative sign on the inside. Uh, and then cosine of theta we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, so that should be negative 35 over 37. Uh, so as a quick reminder, uh, of the three main trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, cosine is the only even one. Sine and tangent are odd. Uh, and if we expand it then to all six, uh, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, which means that secant is also even. And everything else, uh, everything else is an odd function. So cosine and secant are even. Everything else is odd. Uh, cosine of pi over two minus theta. That we'll want to use a co-function identity here. Uh, the co-function of cosine is sine. So cosine of pi over two minus theta is sine theta. Uh, and from our reference triangle above, we know that that is negative 12 over 37. And then finally, we're going to try to get tangent squared, uh, which if we use one of our Pythagorean identities, uh, tangent squared we know is secant squared minus one. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. Uh, so tangent squared, uh, secant squared minus one. Let's move the one over to the other side. Uh, so this is negative 37 over 35 squared minus one uh, and then that will get us to a number uh, and it is 144 over 1225 so this is one way we could have solved it. We wouldn't have even needed the reference triangle there. Uh, but let's instead of doing it with the identity, uh, back up and try that again. All right, so instead of using the identity, let's just go to the reference triangle that we had. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so negative 12 over negative 35. And square that. Uh, and then from there, uh, we can just square the top and square the bottom. 12 squared is uh, 144. And 35 squared is 1,225. Which is how I came up with that number. Okay, and then finally we have the trig identity that we're going to try and solve here. So when we're trying to solve out a trig identity like this one, uh, we are first going to want to get every angle we can uh, to be positive. Uh, and then we're also going to want to have every angle be in terms of uh, just a single angle. Right now, I've got 40 and 50 degrees. And I'm going to want to get rid of that uh, so that I can just end up with a single angle. Uh, and the trick to that is noticing that 40 and 50 are complements of each other, uh, meaning if I add 40 degrees and 50 degrees together, I will get 90 degrees. Uh, so uh, I'm going to end up using that in a second. but. As the first step, uh, let's do this. So eight, we're going to end up doing minus three cotangent of 40 degrees. Maybe highlight that in red so we see that that's the thing that's changing around. Minus two times cosecant squared of 40 degrees minus tangent squared of 50 degrees, 
minus three times negative sine of 50 degrees over sine of 40 degrees. Highlight that and write it again. Say that's the thing that we're changing. So in step one, uh, all I've done here uh, is changed things uh, from negative angles uh, back to positive angles using even and odd identities. Uh, and so again, it's just cosine and secant that are even, everything else is odd. And if it's an odd function, I can factor the negative out. So that's what I've done with both cotangent of negative 40 degrees and sine of negative 50 degrees. And then let's also be a pal here. I'm just going to copy this line uh, so I can talk about what is going to change in the next step. OK. So uh, for the first trick, uh, I'm going to combine that negative sign and that negative sign. Right there, I have, a, so I have a double negative that's going on here. I'll combine that to be positive. Right, combining those two pieces together. Uh, so that'll end up being a plus three instead of a minus three. It's double negative there. I accidentally erased an S over there. Uh, but now I have two 50 degree angles that I am interested in changing, right? Everything else is a 40 degree angle. I just have these two that are 50 degrees. So I'm going to use co-function identities to change each of those. Just slide over here for a moment. Uh, the sine of 50 degrees uh, is equal to the cosine of 40 degrees. Uh, and tangent of 50 degrees, uh, its cofunction is cotangent. And anytime I switch between a function and its cofunction, I'll want to switch to uh, its, uh, its complementary angle. So I'm going to come through and edit these couple pieces. So instead of sine of 50 degrees, I wanted cosine of 40 degrees. And instead of tangent of 50 degrees, I'm going to have cotangent of 40 degrees. I notice I'm going to keep the squared there. So since it was tangent squared, it'll also be cotangent squared. All right. Next up. Uh, we're going to look to simplify pieces where we can. So I still have 8 minus 3 cotangent of 40 degrees minus 2 times some bit over here. And I'll come over and write the identity I'm going to use in a second. But let's actually just finish off this over here. Cosine over sine is cotangent. Uh, but we still have our 40 degrees right there. Cosine over sine is 40. Uh, but for the other bit, I want to simplify cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Uh, and we're going to want to use an identity, one of the Pythagorean identities, specifically the one that says 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared, as long as my angles are the same. So that means that cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is going to be 1. Uh, and then also I can notice that here I have 
a positive and a negative term that looked somewhat similar. Let's actually use a different color to highlight those pieces. So I'm looking at eight minus two times one plus zero. Uh, since again, those two pieces highlighted in yellow add up to zero, two times one is two. So in the end, my result is six. All right, and that should be everything that's in that practice exam.